Okay. I'm Erisa Scholar from Center for Nanotechnology. I'm going to explain the operation of RF sputtering system. Sputtering is a technique in which high energetic ions will strike the surface of the target or material and will eject the atoms from the surface and these ejected atoms will deposit on the substrate. And this happens in high vacuum conditions in the order of 10 power minus 6 m bar. So this is a vacuum chamber unit of the sputtering system and this is the control unit and that is the chiller unit. So in this sputtering system we can do DC sputtering, RS sputtering and nano jam. DC sputtering is used for conducting target materials and it is uh, having a problem with dielectric targeting materials. Over the time, charge will build up on the cathode or on the target and which affects the overall sputtering process. Whereas RS sputtering process, it alternates the electric potential of the current in the vacuum chamber at radio frequencies in the order of uh, 13.56 megahertz and this will actually avoid the charge buildup on the surface of the target at cathode. So as since this is a high vacuum chamber, the main usage of this is to deposit thin films and thin films are having wide range of applications. One is microelectronics. In microelectronics for PMOS, NMOS, CMOS applications, we use thin film depositions and in anti-reflective coatings, we actually used for uh, mirrors, car tops, jewelry and night vision goggles. And for solar panels also we use thin films. And in, for oxidation resistance purpose we use as uh, cutting tools. Uh, in uh, drug delivery system we use thin film deposits. The, so the first step is to switch on the power supply. Now you see the vacuum chamber is in vacuum, so it should be always in vacuum and it is in the order of minus 2, 10 power minus 2. Now the first step is we have to load the target that the, or the material that we want to sputter that is will be done here and the substrate loading will be done here. So since this is in vacuum, we have to bring down the vacuum to atmospheric pressure that is 995 m bar. So for that we have to insert the nitrogen gas which is actually very pure and of, uh, does not have any moisture and it by means of insertion of nitrogen gas we will have the atmospheric pressure inside this and by means of control unit we will do the venting. So first we will turn on the nitrogen gas. So in the control panel I am switching the vent valve. Now you can see we have done venting and atmospheric pressure came down to 1 bar of 1000 m bar. Now you can see uh, we have done vent. Now I can remove this. Now the chamber is in atmospheric pressure so it is coming. You can see. So the opposite part is the grill part that you can see is the TMP turbo motor pump which is actually used to bring the vacuum to 10 power minus 6 m bar that will be helpful and along with that we use rotary pump for creating vacuum. So this is the substrate plate where we can keep the substrates, uh, we can load the substrates. So I am going to load substrates now. on the substrate holder and I am making sure they are not falling because they are going to keep the substrate holder like this inside the vacuum chamber. We have kept the substrate holder and which is covered by the shutter. So whenever we want to start the deposition then we have to move the, remove that shutter then only deposition happens. So I am closing. We have loaded the substrates and target is loaded here. 
therefore the first part is completed now it is in atmospheric pressure now we have to evacuate so we have to create vacuum for that i have stopped vent valve uh, closed vent valve now i am going to uh, open the backing valve uh, and so that we will start the rotary pump also so that 10 power minus 2 vacuum is created and up to the levels of 10 power minus 2 we have to create vacuum now i have started main chamber backing pump and i have also opened the backing valve now within 40 minutes or so this uh, will evacuate evacuation will happen and this will create vacuum up to the level of 10 power minus 2 m bar after opening the backing valve now the pressure reached to 6 times 10 power minus 2 m bar so now we can start the A turbo modular pump uh, for that we have to start this cpu now opening lay assist software so this software is used to control the operation of turbo modular pump so this is the interface which we have if we click we can control the num uh, we can set the frequency Uh, of the turbo modular pump and other parameters, current actual everything we can set here, but this is fine. So we have to turn remote control and we have to start. So now you can see slowly here the frequency will change. Now the frequency has changed and it will reach to the set frequency and. After that, we can say that uh, turbo modular pump has started fully, and now, if we can see the monitor here, if the pressure value will change from minus two to minus six, so it it goes up to six times ten power minus six, and that is the pressure where we can do the deposit. So we have attained eight times ten power minus six m bar pressure inside the chamber. Now it's time to uh, insert the argon gas flow now once argon gas inflow is turned on we are turning on the throttle value controller and also this msc controller now this is pressure this is full actually and this is the these are the Uh, channels for oxygen argon nitrogen and helium depending upon the requirements now i have inserted argon flow therefore by means of this we can regulate the channel flow argon flow inside the chamber this is in scm that is standard cubic centimeter so now this set point this actually is at now minus 6 now we are changing this uh, before this uh, this throttle has to be kept on since this is since this is this is see all these are in off this is in on now so we have on this now the gas flow is is there inside the chamber so by means of this the argon gas is entering the vacuum chamber now you can see the pressure is decreasing down little bit so now this is at full pressure so we are decreasing this we are decreasing to 2 into 10 power minus 2 m bar so here also the chamber pressure will come to that point so we are increasing the argon gas flow now slowly so in scm we are increasing as we are increasing the argon gas flow you can observe the pressure is coming down now the set point pressure is equal to the chamber pressure so it is blinking it is coming to green from red so that so that is that is uh, this is the indication uh, from where we can start the power supply so now we this is the rf power supply this is the rf power supply so we are turning this on i have turned this on so this is rf power supply and this is 
this is on off so i am turning this also to on so red indicates on now this is on now i am slowly increasing the power in steps of see the power is increasing i have increased it to 6 watt 5 watts now for a sec uh, for few seconds we will wait then we will increase little bit again to another 5 watts to 10 watts now in total 10 watts we have increased power and we can wait for a while now you can see here you might you can see uh, earlier there is no plasma now uh, plasma appeared plasma appears because organ gas will be converted to organ ions and electrons because of the power that we are applying to the RS sputtering system and those argon ions will hit the target surface and atoms will be ejected from the target surface and they will travel through vacuum and will be deposited in the substrate which is connected to the substrate holder and in order to in start the deposition we have to move the shutter unless we move the shutter you can see here there will be a shutter inside the chamber which actually covers the substrate holder and so if at all if we remove the substrate holder then only the deposition starts we will change the power here it is now 10 watts now we'll, we are changing this to 20 watts so if at all if you want to deposit the material at 20 watts then 20 watts is set and now see uh, the plasma radiation will increase little bit compared to earlier and if we still increase if you want to see you can see the plasma radiation there it is keep on increasing as we increase the power supply now in order to start the position we have to wait one or two minutes because that sputtering will not be uniform therefore if you wait one or two minutes it will be uniform then we can remove the shutter from then onwards the deposition starts this is how the deposition actually works so these are undeposited films this is quartz substrate this is p-type silicon substrate and this is the sputtered deposited uh, p-type silicon substrate this is the quartz substrate and uh, this is the mask that we had put on the substrate while keeping on to the substrate holder you can see in the middle so this is in the same color of this so this is uh, p type substrate and this is the uh, thin film that has been deposited over the p type silicon substrate similarly with quartz you can see this is the mass that we have kept while keeping on the substrate holder and the thickness of this these films will actually depend upon the wattage, the power that we are supplying, RF power, uh, is 10 watts, 20 watts, 50 watts, 100 watts, and also on pressure that we are actually applying in the chamber while depositing the film. The thickness depends upon deposition time, pressure, and also on the power supply that we are providing.